Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 163 of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. In the last episode, I talked a bit about peripheral vision, trying to draw a little parallel between driving and peripheral vision. And that got me thinking about a variety of different topics in photography relative to what we see, how we see it, where we direct our vision. And uh, again, I, I, I often bring in these things that uh, some of you may have been familiar with at some point in the past, but uh, this particular resource is an older resource uh, written in, or published rather, I guess, in 1980, uh, a collection of essays by a woman named Janet Malcolm. And the collection of essays is called Diana and Nikon, and uh, the subtitle, Essays on the Aesthetic of Photography. And in a particular one of her essays, Uh, Malcolm writes, If the camera can't lie, neither is it inclined to tell the truth, since it can reflect only the usually ambiguous and sometimes outright deceitful surface of reality. The history of the medium is the history of its practitioner's struggle to overcome this disinclination, to provide the missing sense of verisimilitude, to bridge the abyss between the viewer's innocent expectations aroused by his belief in the authority and authenticity of what a photograph shows and the camera's stubborn refusal to fulfill them. That word verisimilitude, the appearance of being true. So there's Janet Malcolm talking about truth in photography. And as I began to, as I I sat down and read that essay uh, not long ago, and uh, sort of putting that idea together with this idea of peripheral vision made me think about what it is that peripheral vision has to do with the relative truth of our photographs and the idea that a photograph is supposed to always tell the truth, which any photographer, I think, probably has come to the realization that that's not true. Every photograph lies, and every photograph lies to uh, varying extents, And it is, in fact, the peripheral piece of our vision, the stuff that is outside of the frame that changes the story, that changes the story of the way we perceive what the picture says and how the picture communicates its idea. So uh, Malcolm saying the camera can't lie, and then also going on to say that neither is it inclined to tell the truth since it can reflect the usually ambiguous, sometimes outright deceitful surface of reality. And I think that's a really important part for us to consider, that when we look at a photograph, we're looking at a photograph as seen through the eyes of a particular photographer, obviously, but also as seen through the mechanics of how photography captured it the camera being pointed in that particular direction at that particular moment, the shutter released at that particular moment. We're looking at the world, but only if the world it really looks like that, as seen through that limited frame at f8 at a 125th of a second at ISO, uh, you know, 200, uh, you know, you could go on and on with uh, the optics of the camera, the delineation of the frame, so forth and so on. So truth, and whether or not truth really exists in a photograph, and that brings me to thinking about how important companion photographs are. You know, certainly one of the things that we've talked about a lot in camera position and various episodes is the photograph in series, the photograph in sequence, the photograph in concert with other images. And it's that ability to use other images to flesh out our idea in more than a single photograph, because a single photograph uh, is kind of uh, hampered. Its hands are tied. It can only tell one aspect of the story. 
a sequence of images or a grouping of images that helps flesh out the idea that you want to communicate uh, can be a much more effective instrument at getting around the problem that the camera always lies. Uh, the camera never tells the truth, the exact truth, about uh, a particular subject, a particular moment in time. So I'll put a link to Janet Malcolm's uh, set of essays uh, on the cameraposition.com blog and in the PDF that goes along with the app. Uh, take a look at it if you get a chance. Find it in your local library, perhaps, or uh, uh, grab it from Amazon and take a look and uh, see what you think about the rest of the essays in the book because they're all quite good and uh, they all offer up some interesting ways for us to look at the medium that we love. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the next episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography.